All right, guys, we're back at it again here at God's Country Hunting and Fishing. We had a lot of comments on the slap trap build video, the idea of it and everything, and um, everybody's wanting to know when we're coming out with the next one, when we're going to finish the videos. Y'all know I wanted to go through and show you the process from taking it through the sawmill and everything all the way to, to fishing the slap trap, but it's just been too hot for our sawmill uh, guy to get out and cut the lumber. So I went over to Dad's and went through his lumber pile um, from years ago when he was building slat traps. And I think I found enough white oak and red oak to go ahead and put one trap together for y'all on video. And um, I'm going to have to cut out all the pieces. I went through earlier today and cut out one of everything so I would have a pattern of all of the, the different pieces that's going to be in the trap. And I'll show y'all. We'll go through the tools that you're going to need the pieces of wood, how I'm, how I'm going to cut them, I'll show you each cut. I'm not going to show every cut, but I'll show each cut for each piece of wood, and we'll go through, get all of our pieces cut out, and then we'll come back and put it all together. First thing you're going to need to remember when you go to doing this is get you a pair of safety glasses. A pair of safety glasses is going to be one of the most important things um, just to keep dust out of our eyes. I'm bad about not wearing them, but we're going to wear them for this. You're going to need a, a brad nailer. Now, you could go through and build this with a hammer and nails, and it's going to take a long time. This is actually Dad's old brad nailer. It's a crown staple or brad nailer, either one. And it shoots up to two-inch nails, two-inch brad nails, or inch-and-a-half crown staples, either one. And we're going to use both of those. I also have another one out in the shop that we'll use to put the slats on to shoot like one inch or inch and a half crown staples. But that's that's probably one of the most important things right there besides being able to make your cuts. You'll need some squares or just one square. A speed square like that will work just fine for what we're going to do. If you got a framing square, that's fine. A level might not be a bad idea to have around in case you need to shoot some straight edges or something marked with a pencil or anything. Um, our brads, doesn't matter what brand or anything, uh, I just got some that this brad nailer would shoot and these are Bostitch, um, just two inch 18 gauge brads and then just what I could find in town Right now they didn't have much to choose from, but these are 18 gauge, inch and a half crown staples. Right there. So that's what we're gonna be using. Got me a hammer in case I need it. Tape measure, of course. Gonna need a couple pencils, a pencil. And uh, another thing that probably gonna end up using, and you don't have to have this, but I had it, so I'm gonna use it, is a, a little hand planer. And, what I'm going to use that for is when I go to making, th this is going to be one of my slats that goes on my throat. So when I go to making these, if I want to make these a little more flexible and thin them down a little bit so they got a little more bend to them, I'll plane this down a little bit thinner toward this end. I'm not going to thin it down up here where I'm stapling it, but down here I may thin these down some. So I've got my hand planer out. Like I said, you don't have to have that. Miter saw. Miter saw is going to be used a lot in this. You're going to need a table saw to make slat traps. It's just going to be impossible to do it without it. Um, I got this saw a few weeks ago. I went ahead and cut some of this, this dry white oak, and it's, it's hard, and our blade's not the greatest. I didn't change the blade out, but we're going to make it work. So be patient with us on that, but you're going to have to have a table saw to make a slab trap. Alright, I'm going to go through the wood real quick and what we're going to cut it down to. Show you all that first, and then when we get done with that, I'll show you how I cut it down. You're going to need some slats. Now, this slat is one Dad had done cut, and he had a bandsaw sawmill so it was real easy for him to cut wide slats and just rip them up into two or one inch or three inch sections these were two and a half by one quarter is what they were they're quarter thick and 
two and a half wide. Five foot long for a five foot trap. I went ahead and cut this one to five foot. Now, you can see over here on the ends where he just took these two and a half ones and notched them for these one inch holes down here. So, you could take this and notch it, just cut an inch out of it, and you got your inch gap back there. But right now, we're going to start out with these just cut to five foot. Now, this is just a 10 inch piece of the slats. These are two to two and a half inches, all of them, the ones that I've gathered up. And this is what's going to be the first throat the front throat or flu whichever you want to call it but when I get done with all of them this is going to be that we're going to need 20 of these for each trap so the easiest way to cut these is cut you some of these slats two to two and a half inches wide and cut them 10 inches long go ahead and cut them on the miter saw and then I just took me a straight edge and marked right here, and you cut that, and it's going to end up coming out like that. It's going to be close enough to use for our throats. Next one is going to be the second throat, or the second flute. What we're going to do on it, I've measured the two old traps, and one of them he had cut um, 18 inches long, and the other one was 16 inches long. I think I like the 18 inch long one better, so we're going to make this one, this new one, we're going to make 18 inches long. So that's going to be the throat fingers for the 18 inch throat. And this is what we're going to start with just some 18 inches. And all you would do to cut this is take it in here like this, put the straight edge on it mark it, cut that line. See here? Right there is what we'll end up with. And both of these ends here are going to be right about two to two and a half inches when we get done with them. Now another thing we're going to need is our frame pieces. These frame pieces to make a 16 inch trap is going to be 15 and a half long because we got these slats are going to be on the outside out here so that's a quarter inch here and quarter inch here that's going to be a total of 16 inches so if you're not in the state of Louisiana say Mississippi or something like that where your regulations are different and you're 15 inches you can't build them any bigger than 15 inches or whatever your regulations are you're going to have to be sure to cut this down to where when you staple your slats on the outside, you're not over that width. Louisiana, we're fine with 16 inch ones. We can even go over that a little bit, I believe. So um, right there, 15 and a half long. And I just chopped these off on the miter saw. It's pretty easy. Um, and this is inch, inch wide lumber. So, if you're going to get lumber cut to make some of these, you could have some inch um, thick, just lumber boards cut out of white oak, and you can cut all of your framework out of that. Now, if you got them cut inch and a half thick, you don't have to have these two, or Dad was doing this because it was a lot easier to go to two, two and a half inches. I've seen slat traps where the slats are only like this wide, so you could actually use an inch and a half board and just make your slats inch and a half. It'd actually be easier to cut on the table saw. This this thickness would be really hard to cut slats on a table saw. So you're gonna have to have these, and we're gonna have to have a, enough of them to make um, four frames like this right here. This section here. So we're gonna need. Um, 16 of them. We're going to need 16 of these to build one trap. And I'm going to cut a couple extra ones because I want me a handle on the back of the trap. Alright, now for our throats, we're going to have to cut 
four of these um, on each throat. That's got a bevel on it. You can see the bevel? This one is going to be the front throat. That's a 15 degree bevel. And I'll show you how I come up with that. I just come in here and cut me one 15 and a half that would go inside the trap. Um, put the bevel on it. It was kindly a guess. This is the 15 degree bevel here. Stuck it in there. Got my slat ready. And come in here and just just set it up and, and look like about the same angle. I mean, this is parallel with these uh, tickler fingers in here. So I'm pretty sure that that's about what he was cutting. You might could change it a little bit if you wanted it tighter or loose, but this, this front flue doesn't catch. It needs to be open so the bigger catfish will get in here, get to messing around. They see that opening and they'll go on in. We uh, sat in our table saw up. We had one that's uh, right thickness, this is a little over an inch, inch and a quarter. It really doesn't matter on these. They're all going to be inside the trap. They at least need to be an inch, I would say, but they could be inch and a half square. This one's an inch by inch and a half, and I'm just going to take this pattern one, lock the guide down, and that's going to be my cuts right there. And I'm taking this lumber. We had these cut 15 and a half, so they're already the right um, length, and I'm just going to cut my blocks out real quick. I've already cut some. I'm going to show you how I do it. And this is the safest way. Dad used to do it this way. I got me a hold down block here, and I got me a push block. And I'm gonna push this through there, and that way my fingers ain't nowhere around that table saw. Alright now, the ones that come out perfectly square, I'm going to use all those for the back ones. And the ones that didn't come out perfectly square, like this one here, um, I'll use that for my bevel cuts because I'm going to cut that off on the bevel cut anyway. So I'll pick all them out, save those for the bevel cuts, any with any bad spots, and the rest of them are just the perfectly square ones. That's going to be for the the framework in the back. I'm going to run this up to 15 degree real quick. Old craftsman table saw does good. One thing we've seen, um, we got to looking at on this second throat is, I said these are going to be 18 inches, but we're actually going to go ahead and start cutting these 20 inches. That way that gives us a little more room for adjustment. So if our throat's not tight enough, all we got to do is just slide it up, staple it in place. And we can trim these off or just let it overhang inside the trap either one. So we've got all of our uh, slats that wasn't quite as good. This this is a good one. We're keeping that one. But we got some that had knots and different things that broke. We're going to take those and go ahead. We need 20 slats like this for each each throat. So I need 10 of these 20 inches long. That's what I'm going to cut out real quick. So I'll get I'll get two fingers out of each slat. All I'm going to do is just mark these 20 inches. It ain't rocket science, it ain't got to be perfect, I don't think. And then we can take this one, use that as a, as a pattern to mark our other ones with. Get us 10 of these. All 
All right, we got all of our 10 inch pieces of slat for our fingers that we need and all of our 20 inch pieces of slat for our fingers. I'm gonna just lay this right here. I'm actually gonna come in about a quarter inch here and about a quarter inch here to about right there. This ain't gotta be exact. Um, I do remember that it wasn't that critical on those, especially the front ones. But something about like that right there. We're going to put a mark on all of these real quick. Get ready to cut them. I'm going to go a little more toward the corner. Kind of make these kind of make these pointed, I think. Go point to the corner on these 20 inches. Should be pretty close to our angle right there. Go just a little bit more to where I'm hitting that corner right there. Should be about We got our flues cut out, our fingers for our flues. All that looks good. I think we will uh, plane a few of these real quick. Once we get these long ones plain, we'll go in the shop, maybe in the air condition. Um, got an air compressor in there so we can build our frames and our flues, our throats, go ahead and put that together in there. By planing this, it's gonna make them throats when they hit that water and soak up, it's gonna make it just a little more flexible. See how it turns out. All right, we got all of our frame pieces cut out right over there. We got our front flue, 15 degrees on the bevel. We've got four of them and all the throat fingers right there. We've got the catch flue or throat, second throat, and our throat fingers right here. I planed only these, only the catch throat. I wanted to spend a little more time on the catch throat um, and make sure that these flex a little bit. So when they get wet, you know, these fish going in there, that's going to flex and open up. I didn't want them the original quarter inch thick. So I planed them down just a little bit. And, and I didn't take a lot out of here because these tips will break on you when you load up with fish. I took, I took most of it out with a planer here. That way I'm thick back here and thick up here. So this is a flex part in here. And that's, that's where it's going to flex a little bit. When it gets wet, it'll flex a little more than that. So I've got all that cut out. The only thing we got left is uh, the stuff for the door, which isn't a big deal. I'll show you that when we get there. And the slats. And that's one we've done that's five foot long. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just start taking these slats and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. We counted and think I think 23 will make this trap on the, the width ones that we've got. Now if you if you got inch and a half lumber and you're gonna have inch and a half slats you're gonna have to just cut them and put them on it till you get all the way around it i don't know how many it's gonna be this is just what we had to work with double check real quick i'm pretty sure this one was five that i cut 60 inches I'll go ahead and measure it and it is oh 
little yard stick. A little over a yard. Now these have warped and all kind of stuff, so I'm not sure what we're going to run into when we go to putting the slats on, but we'll do the best we can, and I guarantee you we'll make one that'll catch some fish. We've got a good many of our uh, five foot pieces cut and ready to go. So we're going, we got enough to get started. Go ahead and make the frames and, and the flues, staple the flues in. So we're going to move some of this stuff to the shop. It's a little bit cooler in there. It's about 98 degrees out here right now. So we're going to move this in there and, and put that stuff together, get started on it.